you know, if you're going to get married and your husband or your, your future husband is going to look at you and be like, I'm looking for a traditional wife. Okay, great. So if you're looking for a traditional wife, then I'm going to cook, I'm going to clean, and I'm going to raise the children. Yes. You're going to do everything else. Right. You're going to okay. be able to support me being that. Right. Because my grandmother did that. Right. But she did not have to go out and work. Right. She didn't have to do all the extras. Right. That, that exactly. now, now I have to do. Right. Right? 100%. Yeah. Welcome back, guys, to the Womanhood Lectures. I'm Yasmin. And I'm Lyra. Lyra, I had the greatest conversation um, this weekend with my oldest daughter, okay. and I wanted to kind of uh, talk about the things that came up in that conversation. So she was So she's been dating this guy for over a year now. Okay. They're very serious. Um, and she was asking me, like, real advice, like, woman-to-woman -woman advice, like, mom, how do you know that um, this is the right person, like a good fit for you? Because she's thinking long-term, obviously, right? She's thinking like, if we get married, what are the things that I should be looking for? Aside from mm. so the surface stuff, right? She's like, like tell me, tell me the real deep stuff that after decades of marriage, like what would you say now to someone my age? Because she's, she's 19. Um, you know, she's still young, obviously, in Don't terms do of... It. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go to the dark side. Um, <laughs> I'm right. such a bad person. I'm no. so bad. At this. Sorry, I mean, go you ahead. know no, what? It's like she's she's actually coming to me advice and for advice, like looking at it from the perspective of like, what would you and your friends tell someone who's right. now on the cusp of serious relationships, even if it's not marriage, a serious relationship. Right. How, like, if I'm going to be spending a lot of time with this person, what should I be really looking for in a relationship that's going to benefit me the most and like be a good like just a good exchange of our like she's kind of speaks like me like a good exchange of our energies that's going to be like really helpful for both of us um I you know can't speak for him like what is he looking for um you know I'd be biased and being like she's perfect like she's great right but like <laughs> you know she's thinking of what would be a really good fit for her and I said okay let's look at your personality but let's also just look at some generalized things that I think would be really important for you to to look at in a man before mm -hmm. you settle down with him. Um, and the first thing I we got into talking about was initiative. And I think it's this really subtle thing that we don't always look for in a partner. And I said, like, is he the kind of guy who will take initiative on things? Like, he'll... Sure, he'll take initiative and like call you right. up and go on a date, whatever. I go, but what about other things in his own life? I go, pay attention to what how he runs his own life. Is he the kind of guy who will take the initiative to say fix a problem as soon as it comes up, or does he procrastinate? Let it does he get let worse. it percolate? Does he hide avoid. from it in subtle ways? Mm -hmm. Right? Does he avoid it? Or is he someone who's like straight up like, okay, I'm going to face this right on and like, let's, let's, let's get to the bottom of this and let's, and let's see what we have to do about this. Right. Whether it's a relationship problem, whether it's like, oh, he's late on a bill. Is he the type who'll, who'll complain about it or will he go and pay that damn bill? Absolutely. Right. Like his own stuff. If right. he, if he's forgotten to do something like register for something, will he immediately go and look at it or will he kind of wait until he gets a notice that says, oh, yeah, you're not registered for this. Sorry. Yeah. You know what's so funny? I want to kind of backtrack a little bit. First yeah. and foremost, yeah. I want to commend your daughter <laughs> for being 19 and having this conversation because oh you know gosh, what? It's right? so, it's, it, it's so, it's wonderful that she has that much clarity to ask that question. Most yeah. girls, when they start dating boys, just like probably us, when we first started dating, mm -hmm. like you were just so gaga, like, you know, over the relationship that these type of questions never came up. You were just like, yeah, you didn't think about that. Whatever. Like I'm in love. Like yeah. whatever. He's I'll deal cute. with it. He's he cute. Did. I want to be You know, we have a great time him. together. We you get know. along. Exactly. Yep. So a hundred percent commend her Aww, for actually having that you. conversation. I really hope my daughters do as well. I'm sure they and will. I'm sure they will. Um, as I start thinking about what you're saying, the first thing that pops to my mind with initiative is, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I think when you're married for a really long time, like you and I have been, mm. um, it might be just in my marriage. So I'm going to throw my husband under the bus here. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, okay. you, you, um, you know, you don't want to be the type of person who's constantly reminding the other person of things that they're doing. And that, oh, yes. that whole, like, l you know, people laugh about it. It's like a joke, like, oh, yeah, my wife nags, nags me. me. But my wife nags me. I and it's notice like, well, that if hmm. you don't take initiative on something as a right. man, 
Of course your wife course is your going to like, end up hey. nagging you, but you've put her in that position. Exactly. By not responding exactly. or not doing something. 100%. And it's just there and it's there and it's there. And she's like, I've asked you three times. Right. Like, what do you want me like, to do? Did you call the... the do I need the, to dance? Did you call the phone the, company? You know, rainfall from Have the sky? Have you called the phone company? Yes. What about the doorbell? The 100%. doorbell needs to be done. Oh my gosh. You know, constant reminders, yeah, reminders, yeah. reminders. I think a lot of people have that issue. Right. I think a lot of people so, do. So to that young girl who's getting into a relationship, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah, You're probably yeah. still going to be an egg or of maybe course, you'll seem course, like an things. egg, right? Yeah. Because life takes a toll, things happen. But if you see that initiative from them, mm-hmm. you know... Like or lack of. Lack of. You know, lack of is a warning sign. I, but, it's you know, a warning if you see sign. That initiative, I, I told her. Know, pr- like, make sure to always, um, how do you say it? Approve of it. Say, oh my gosh, thank you. What do you thank mean? Thank you for remembering. Because, oh, yes, you know what yes, I mean? yes, like yes, that, yes. Give, give them the gift of like acknowledgement right, right away. Right. So, yeah, as when, much as you want them to be giving initiative, yes. as a woman, you have to be like, thank acknowledge you. it when Remind they do. them. Like, yeah. thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that they keep doing it. Because if they fall by the wayside mm-hmm. and like 10 years go by in a marriage and they just start to. Yeah. And you haven't said anything things, or you like haven't done anything. initiative. Yeah. 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 Let's say so, just keep constantly. So that was yes. number one. So number initiative, one, initiative, right? It's a, it's a really like subtle thing that we don't, we don't think that that's really all that important. It makes such a huge difference in your long-term relationship, particularly when you're building a, a family right. together, right? Absolutely. It makes such a difference. So that was one thing. Um, I said, look at how he responds to setbacks. Look at how does he respond in his life when things don't go his way? Mm-hmm. Does he throw a temper tantrum? Does he, he can be, he can get all emotional, but then what does he do with that? Right. D- right. He can get mad about stuff and say like, this didn't go my way or this person didn't come through for me. How does he handle that? Does he handle it? by taking responsibility mm-hmm. and actually saying, okay, so this didn't work out, now what do I do? Is he creative enough? Is he driven enough? Is he someone who's gonna jump back up and be like, okay, I'm gonna use this now. I'm gonna use that to motivate me to right. do the thing that needs to be done, right? Right. Instead of that sort of, ne- like, so here's here's an example. Someone doesn't come through for you, right? You're you're depending on them for something. You trusted that they were going to come through for you. They did not. How do you handle that? Do you complain about them? Okay, sure. Sometimes we complain about it. We right. bitch and moan about it. Fine. You get over that initial thing. What do you do now? Do you then decide in your mind, I'm not going to trust anyone. I'm not going to trust anyone in my life. I'm just going to do everything on my own. That's also not a great way to live your life. Absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, fast track to like burnout. So then what do you do instead? And I'm, I was giving her these examples, like how does he handle it when his friends don't come through for him? Or when even when he expects something from you and it just doesn't work out or you don't come through, you're, no one's perfect, right? What does he do with that? Does he turn around and say, okay, I'm going to see the silver lining in this and see what can I learn from that? Now what can I do next time differently, better, whatever? How can I handle it differently? How can I put things in place so that next time I won't be so hurt by it or... Um, you know, taking down the river by this thing yeah. that didn't yeah. work out, right? Yeah. Things like that. I said, how does he handle setbacks? How do you handle setbacks? Like this is this is for women too, but you're looking for a partner, especially when you're looking for a man who's going to be able to be a provider. He's going to have providership. He's going to have protectorship, which is one of the, two of the things that you and I absolutely believe are very fundamental cornerstone for a strong masculine man in the home. Absolutely. Traditional or not, that's... Uh, it, that's just what works Mm -hmm. from my experience, from your experience, right? So a man who can then take those lemons, doesn't have to make lemonade out of them, but what does he do with it? Yes. Right? Does he find some positive way to either fix the problem or set something up or does he learn from it? Does he learn from his mistakes or does he burrow? Does he complain? Does he say the world is awful and like screw this and screw everybody? It just sucks. That doesn't help anybody. Mm -hmm. Doesn't help him. Doesn't help you. So think about things like that. Um, So I said, that kind of leads me to my next thing where I was like, so how does he handle his primal urges? Things like anger, which is a very primal urge for men and sex. Okay. How does he handle things like that? If he's rejected by you, how does he handle that? Right? Does he use that against you or does he use that to try to create more of a connection with you and figure out what is going on that's not working here right I don't know that's that 
I know that's a tricky thing. I know that's a tricky one, I should right? have looked at this list beforehand. <laughs> what do you think of that? That's an interesting thing. I think mm-hmm. that, you know, and it, and it touches on something we've spoken about before, mm-hmm. which is like that emotional connection. Yeah. And most often it is that. So mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think in order to understand the primal urge and to understand what they'd be angry about, and uh, obviously when we're coming, like talking about sex, which yeah. I'm very uncomfortable talking about <laughs> when it comes to our children. But anyways. <laughs> okay. So, you know, <laughs> Sorry, young, it's a thing. Young maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh no, my gosh. Forget, forget sex. Just intimacy. Intimacy Just itself. Like, is, is just different like, for women than right. it is for men. So right. it's kind of like, you know, I would say connect, um, connect, 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 connect. Have, mm-hmm. Work on that connection, mm-hmm. that emotional connection. Make it so strong mm-hmm. that when it comes to the primal urges or when it comes to a sexual relationship, and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. I mean, it, it won't be on the forefront. It won't be so... Um, yeah. intense, you know, right. if there's rejection right. or if there's any type of issues down the road, because you, you, you built that connection with each other. Right. That way you can have those strong conversations yes. to say, you know yes. what, this is how I feel about our sex life. Yeah. You know, what's interesting. I pointed out a show that's kind of playing where people call in and mm. talk about their sex life. Yes. And the yes. doctor gives advice about like what you can do. Um, mm. especially if, you know, you're having problems in the bedroom mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's, Time and time again, and you know the the conversation always comes down to like, how do you build your emotional connection again? Yeah, yeah. You know, so you don't want to find it's like a yourself, difference in expectations. Yeah. So yeah. if you don't want to find yourself in a marriage like 15, 20 years down the line, mm. th- saying, "Oh my God, I don't have anything left," and that's really common. Mm-hmm. It's very common to look at your partner fifteen years later and be like. We've got nothing left. Yeah, yeah. We have what no are, connection. What are we doing here? We, yeah, we grow you apart. Didn't, you didn't. Tend I hear the term to "grow apart" a lot, yes. and it's like absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I would say connection. Work yeah. on that emotional connection. Deal with what the urges are. You know, talk yes. about it right away on what the expectation is in that yeah. department. Yeah, I would and say. I think, and I think also like just kind of circling back to anger. Again, we were, we've talked about this before. Men tend to get funneled into like socialized into when they're upset, it's anger. It always mm-hmm. goes to anger. I'm upset about something, I'm, I'm pissed about it. I feel hurt by someone, I get pissed about it. I feel fearful about something, I wanna fight and I just feel anger. So anger is one of those things that I think for men, you really need to look at how do you handle your anger right. in all aspects of your life. How do you do it? Like when you're at home and someone pisses you off, do you lash out at them? Are you the type of person that like spews or are you the type of person who, and there's just different types of people, right? Or do you bottle it up? Does it come out later? Like Mm, how do you, how do you handle those types of things in your life? And, or do you, are you really, really nice to everyone at work and in your family, like extended family and your friends, but you're an asshole at home? Yeah. Because you can't, like, you can't show that anger to someone else. So you take it home and you take it out on your family or vice versa. Right. Maybe you're really amazing at home, but you're a total asshole at work because you're not balanced in figuring out, like, how to either set boundaries or talk to people or communicate in a way where you can quell your anger in a really, in a, in a healthier way. Yeah. And so you end up being an extreme in one way or another. Right. So I think that's really important um, for a man to be looking at. And it does affect your relationship. Yeah. Right. Um, So we kind of talked about learning from your mistakes. Um, So I asked her, like I said, how about things like motivation? So she's asking me about like motivation because she's really, she's young, she's she's motivated, she's pumped. She's like, I'm at the beginning of my life. I want to do this. I want to learn that. I want to invest. I want to, and it's like amazing to see. And I'm like, so is he motivated along with you? Is he motivated in different situations? Can he stay motivated when the chips are down? Can he turn, right. can he turn some of those setbacks or things that happen into motivation to propel him to his next level? Or does he end up kind of right. burying himself? And, and we've all been on both ends of the stick, right? Like I've, there are some times when something is just so overwhelming where you're just like, I can't actually deal with this. Mm-hmm. And there's other times where you're like, I'm going to take that and I'm just going to push myself into the next whatever it is, right. right? I'm going to be able to use that motivation. And it's not about, it's not, it's not really about pushing through without looking at yourself. I'm not saying that we're, you know, spiritually bypassing or that we're pretending we are actually dealing with our emotions and saying, okay, now what do I get to do? I get to move forward with that. Can you stay positive? Can you, you know, find, right. find something to drive yourself forward? I go, okay. so I'm like, look at how, look at the things that motivate him look at whether he can stay motivated or if he gives up, 
Yeah, that's going to affect your life. But you're going to be you're going to evolve in a relationship, right? Yeah. And obviously you're going to face challenges. So when you sit with the priest, um, you know, and you talk about your what you're going to mm-hmm. do before you get married, whether it's a priest or, you know, a rabbi Anyone. or yeah, any yeah. any spiritual um you know, direction that you are in and you say to yourself, you know, I'm going to speak to them before I get married about mm-hmm. our relationship. And they'll ask you questions like, how are you going to handle mm-hmm. um, this scenario? So right. they'll bring up, you know, you're going to have children. So what are your decisions when it comes to that? Because you yes. kind of want to be aligned, right? Yeah, it just makes life easier. For so when sure. you go through all these ups and downs, how mm-hmm. do you handle those ups and downs? But also, you know, you want a partner and this is the advice I'd give to her is that you'd want a partner where maybe you guys will fall off you know and lose direction and maybe you'll make mistakes or maybe you know there'll be that point where you're like oh wow like you know I'm not the same way I was 10 years ago I maybe want to lose weight I maybe want to you know change careers I might want to head in this direction or maybe you have a great idea that you want to do with your partner you know ask the questions like how would you handle those type of scenarios you so know? when your partner's changing yes when how do you handle changing, that how do you handle your partner changing mm. and how do you change and grow together mm. and have similar common conversations to support each other and motivate each other like is that there you know um i can see your daughter as that type of person yeah yeah, somebody who's like on the sideline yes kind of pushing her yes and 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 that's what i would say is just keep yeah like ask those questions are you going to be that this type of person or are you going to feel like maybe intimidated or Or jealous or jealous exactly Mm -hmm. so you kind of want to talk and have those conversations yeah because that's a very tough it's a tough thing yeah i mean and even in our in our other relationships I said to her you want people in your tribe in your circle your Mm -hmm. man for sure who will cheer for you when you're successful yes it's so easy to be like compassionate and oh I feel so bad like when someone's down like let me support them but when someone's doing really well in your life have you had friends like this you're doing really well for whatever reason in, in in any aspect and they're kind of not really cheering for you yep they're very quiet Right. Right. Or in in some in some ways, there's like this little kind of backhanded stuff. I don't know. Backhanded talk. I just you can feel it. You You can can feel it it. when they're not cheering for you on the sidelines, when you're doing well and you're starting to catapult and take off in your life. That's a warning sign. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, from your man, but also from your friends, ladies, like <laughs> watch, watch them people. Um, and so the last two things I talked about with her were things like integrity. Mm-hmm. So very simple. Does someone actually say what they're going to do and do what they're going to say? Right. So are right. they congruent? They mean what they say? Yeah. 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 Are they congruent with I'm going to do this and then they do it? Very simple. Um, and do, do they do it regardless of whether other people are checking in on them or not? Right. Right. Like it's it's basically doing the right thing when no one's watching. Right. Um, so that's integrity. And that's just like I, I see that as like, are you aligned with um, who you are as a person and how you act as a person? Right. Right. And um, the other thing was responsibility and accountability. And that also is like, can you own your own stuff? Can you own your own shit? Basically. Right. I made a mistake. I own it. I, res- I take responsibility. That was me. And now I'm going to try and do better. Right. As Maya Angelou said, when you know better, you do better. Yeah. Right. And it's like it's that whole sense of like, is someone actually following a path? Are they saying the things? Are they like, is everything aligned? Right. I'm doing what I say I'm going to do. I'm following through. I make a promise to myself. For example, you, you made a promise to yourself and a commitment to yourself to get fit. Right. You're getting up at every day at 5.30 in the morning. I don't know how you do it, girl. Oh my gosh. I know. You are taking, you are actually committed to it because you're doing the action. Yes. And you are consistently doing the action and you're sticking to your word. If you can't stick to your word for yourself, how the hell are you going to stick to your word for anyone else? How are you going to come through with your promises to someone else if you're not doing it for you? Well, the reason why I'm able to commit in a lot of respect is is I want to, at the beginning, Mm -hmm. to show my kids that the example the example right the discipline that it takes to get there and like oh yeah mom's gone like she's gone like where's she she's uh she's at the gym Mm where's she now oh she's at you know she's out running the road so like i wanted to show them that now it's just become just a pattern it's kind of like i wake up in the morning i fix my bed 
I'm at the gym. Like it's yeah. just so part of who I am that yes. if I miss it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm still on this journey right now. So it's still mm. obviously um, going to be a while. But like I'm saying, you know, I have this goal. I have this mm-hmm. time frame. And I'm going to achieve it in that time frame. Yeah. Now, all of these things or hiccups might come down uh, along the way. For sure. And I always say to myself, you know, give myself the grace of time and give myself the grace of of uh, pressures or certain things that come in, like Halloween when they come home with a bag of candy. Like, I'm screwed, right? <laughs> uh, Christmas when yes. there's like, you yeah. know, tons of food You're on like, the table. Like, hide it. I am, hide it. I am done yes. for it, right? Yeah. No, but you know what? It, it's reality. It's the way it is. Yeah. But if I applied that to a marriage and a yes. relationship and I uh-huh. say to myself, like, you want to have a marriage where you can, and I will say this to my daughters, right? Obviously, mm. we're not talking about relationships at this point because they're younger. But um, if you're going to have a marriage, then you want to be able to sit with your partner every single year and say, where are we? Mm-hmm. What are we doing? What are our goals? What are we trying to achieve? You know, what are we going to, what is it going to look like when we're 55, 65, 75? Like, what does mm-hmm. our retirement look like? Mm-hmm. You know, what do you want? Has that changed since we first met? You yeah. know what I mean? That's how's, actually how's really our goals good idea. changed? Where yes. do you want to travel to? You know? Because yes. like the first thing I said to my husband, and I remember this, I said that I want to retire mm-hmm. and I want to live by the ocean. Ooh. Nowhere near an ocean right now. Like nowhere near an ocean right now. Hey, nowhere near retirement, girl. You I are know, not I'm there. I'm still very young. But yes. I'm saying, you know, at the end of the day, that's what I wanted. And, yeah. and to keep sight of those goals, like I think that I would want that for my daughters. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I have a bunch more. Yes. <laughs> add, add on, add on, baby. And they're not like, you know, you, 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 you spoke so eloquently and it was so <laughs> nice. And yes, I would definitely, uh, want to, you know, impact, um, Rain's question right yeah. now. Yeah, so, yeah. um, I met Rain's uh, boyfriend, boyfriend. Yeah, and yeah. he is so sweet. He is. I nice. like He's my wonderful. heart just melts when I'm like, did he just say that? Or did he just do that? Who are you? Where are you? Do you have an old, do you have he's a, a, yeah, yeah. Do you have he's a very siblings? lovely, respectful he's young man. Very, Absolutely. very lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say this, I would say <clears throat> you want somebody who is willing to pick up the slack. Okay. 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 So at the end, and I, and I noticed that he is like that. It's yes. I, like, I loved it. I was like, <laughs> he's doing the you, dishes. Right? Yeah. He's great. <laughs> um, you know, cause when you do yeah. get busy and you have kids and you're like, you know, cause I mean, genetically speaking, like women have the kids, right? Oh yeah. So yeah, the men, yeah. Have, the men are the men do have to step up a little bit, you mm-hmm. know. And okay. we do live in these modern times where both of them are likely going to be working, yeah. And both of them are likely going to be building, uh, building themselves yep. individually, yeah, yeah. And and have their careers and going to be providing fifty fifty or whatever the money, right? Mm-hmm. We don't live in that traditional uh, time where you and I had discussed this earlier too. Mm-hmm. It's like. You know, if you're going to get married and your husband or your your future husband is going to look at you and be like, I'm looking for a traditional wife. Okay, great. So if you're looking for a traditional wife, then I'm going to cook, I'm going to clean, and I'm going to raise the children. Yes. You're going to do everything else. Right. You're going to okay. be able to support me being that. Right. Because my grandmother did that. Right. But she did not have to go out and work. Right. She didn't have to do all the extras. Right. That, that exactly. now, now I have to do. Right. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. So I feel like this conversation, it might be a lot of pressure on boys because boys generally, like if you were to look at the way my husband was raised or, mm. you know, a lot of boys in my family, Absolutely. like if you look at my brothers, yes. you know, not so much so my younger brothers, but they were just treated differently than the girls. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? At the mm-hmm. end of the day, it was different. Yeah. Not to say that they didn't pick up any domestic qualities. Right. But most often, a lot of men don't have a lot of domestic qualities. If, you know, yeah. I know that there are some who do lovely, you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. it, and for mm-hmm. sure it happens, but it's not quite the majority. Though. It's not quite the majority. Okay. So Fair. I would say, you know, I need to know that you're going to pick up the slack. Okay. You know, if you don't know how to clean, learn. Learn. <laughs> if you don't know how to do the laundry and your learn. mom did your laundry, yeah. you've got to learn how to do the laundry. Because yeah, you yeah. need to help them you need to help a mother out. Like that's really what I say. Yeah, yeah. I would say you need to help a mother out. Mm-hmm. Um, so learn how to clean and obviously, you know, have a hand in all of the the domestic things in, in at a least household. know what's going on. At least on. know. You know what yes. I mean? Like not to say that yeah. you know, Rain may take a year off and 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 raise her first child and right. be at home and be right. available to do all those things. Right. Maybe. But so to, to know that he's to willing to, to step in and, and kind of help with that. Okay. So the domestic stuff. So yes. <laughs> so Lyra is talking about please learn how to do your laundry. <laughs> Please learn how to wash some dishes right. and support it's, and it's clean more the just kitchen. a level of support that you would look yes. for in your future partner to yes. say, you know what, I'm coming to the table 50 50. Okay. Right? Okay. Fair um, enough. You definitely should set out the finances and figure out, hey, you know, if you're going to be X and I'm going to be X, 
how is the household going to look financially and right. how are how are we going to plan out our life based on that right yeah and who's who's kind of going to do yeah this is the nitty-gritty stuff like that's the stuff people fight over remember that's why people get divorced yeah that's people get divorced because of uncommunicated expectations right right yep like no one's having this conversation yeah at the age of 25 trying to get married for the next 40 years right right, like there's no communicated yeah expectations and Um, finances finances big people fight over money People fight over uh, lack of emotional intimacy Mm -hmm. and people fight over basically not being able to communicate their expectations appropriately to to each other. Yeah. So it's always the fallout of not communicating that they fight about. Yes. They don't realize that it's the, it's the communication that's broken down. They're just like, I don't like this and I don't like that. And you're doing this and I'm not, we're not doing that and whatever, but they're not realizing that it's because they have not communicated that they want something and the other person is is being honest to say, I can either give you that or not, right? Mm-hmm. And then now what do we do with that answer, right? right. That's that's the kind of stuff where people just don't realize that. Yes, communicate, yeah. communicate. They, they think it's, they think it's the money. dishes when it's, no, talk I don't money. feel, right. Exactly, talk money. Yeah. Talk everything, talk everything out. And mm-hmm. if you have to be clear as day mm-hmm. what that looks like, because you don't want to be 10 years in, yeah. you know, in a recession, facing some money challenges, and then all of a sudden you're like trying to figure out how things are going to get done, right? right? Yes. And you're not able yes, to communicate yes, yes. appropriately. Yeah. Or you're um, uncomfortable with it. Exactly. You're uncomfortable. So make sure you're mm. able to to be comfortable with that. And yep. last but not least, I will mm-hmm. say this is a really important one. Okay. I had, uh, I had um, actually been surrounded by a massive family recently, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I was just watching the family and, you know, I speak from a perspective where I do have the gift of contrast where my family is quite small. Okay. Um, and you kind of always want to make sure before you get married what your future family is going to look like. Ooh, that's a big one that people do not want to look at. No, they don't. They think that I can just love this person and to hell with everything else. True. And there are situations, it though, can happen. where you could be the, you, you know, you're, you're a single child or maybe you're just like falling out with your family or falling out with your siblings and falling mm-hmm. out with your parents. And then maybe you're just solo, kind of your own, right, you know, right. on your own. I'm going right. to get married now. Like that's obviously a conversation that needs to be had. But let's no, just say but you're marrying into a family, girl. You're marrying into a family. We know this. Yeah. Yeah. So you're marrying into a family. You have to obviously consistently have conversations about that. Mm. And that is 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 a common question is like okay i'm marrying the, i'm marrying this person into my family mm-hmm. uh, the person has to be accepted by my family yeah. right and it's kind of like well right then and there Makes you have it. to be like listen if you're marrying me mm-hmm. you know and this is for your daughter if you're marrying me then i come first mm. i come first mm-hmm. and Rain, like obviously giving her that advice to say, you know what, you have to still respect that there is this family yeah. and you have to build on that because right. that, right. that is so beautiful. Like yeah, when yeah, I yeah. saw this family just having fun with each other, playing games, you know what I mean? Mm. Obviously engaging with each other and the love that was there was just so incredible and intense. And I think mm-hmm. it's such a beautiful thing if you, if you are getting married and you are making that leap. It's kind of something that you just keep. You always keep family close because mm-hmm. that's it, how you build that. It, it's yeah. going to make a big difference, especially when you have kids. Yes. Right? Because you are not going to be a little island all by yourselves. You're they're, you're going to want to hopefully have them involved with their cousins, their aunts, yes. their uncles. If there's grandparents involved. Like I've always thought like the more the merrier. The more love you, that your kid can have and experience, the better. Yes. It doesn't matter if you don't like that person, but if that person treats your kid well, that's great for your kid. Absolutely. hundred percent. Right? So yeah. you, you have to overlook those things of like, I don't get along with my sister-in-law or I don't, oh, like, I don't like this, this person. person. Yeah, you Whatever, whatever. It takes if a village. Right. It, it takes, takes a, a village. village. At the end of the day, you, it does. it's really hard to do it all on your own. And why would you want to do that if you have the opportunity to of a family one. that can support you, right? And it 100%. just makes things, it, it makes life so much easier. So you have to just be in tune mm-hmm. with your partner on that. You okay. have to come okay. to the table and you have to understand what that feels like and, and share in that. You know okay. what I mean? There can't so, be one person who thinks yes. one way yes. and then per- the other person thinks another way because yeah. when it comes down to the nitty gritty, yes. like, you know, yeah. people, people get together and yeah. it's so sad, especially after the pandemic, uh, people get together either for, they say, Weddings and funerals. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. and really and truly, like, that's something you have to talk to your partner about. Yes. What does that look like? Like, yeah. what does our family look like? And how mm-hmm. do we keep 
everything right. stuck together like yeah. glue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Like, I get it. Like, they, you know, yes, you want to be like your, your immediate nuclear family is first priority, mm-hmm. but then there's all these other things that are going to be part of it. So yes. can we, can we live with that? Like, can, how are we going to navigate that? Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I thought, I thought you were really going to like say something like, Hey, he's got to be able to, you know, wash dishes properly or you're out. <sighs> you know, I like, I, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> or pick up your socks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. You, you know what? I wanted, that? I wanted to be more impactful today yeah. in the sense like this is rain we're talking to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rain, no, you're probably awesome. gonna have to accept that he leaves his laundry on the floor. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe not. No, no, no. Oh, he's no. not. Okay. He's, he's, he's a he clean. Is a little, he's a good boy. I like that. He's, you know, he's, he's so very cute. good he's with so sweet. managing himself. Yes. No, that's good. Yes. But I'm you know what? Like, you know, at the end of the day, you can work through all that that little shit. Like you yeah, work yeah. on all that little stuff and you can yes. work as you go along. Yes. Um, the things that I mentioned to you are big. You just want mm. somebody who's going to support you. They're not going to be perfect. No yeah. one's perfect. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm not perfect. My partner's yeah. not perfect. But it's about overcoming all of those things together mm-hmm. and figuring out exactly how to make it work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> tell her listen yes, Lyra, you gotta watch the yes, show Lyra's yeah, talking to yeah, you she's talking to you directly <laughs> awesome okay well thank you so much for joining us again this week guys we will see you next time